Well, good morning. It's September 30th. It's Monday. It's the last day of the month. And let's get into this week's action. Let's start off with the Econo Day, all right? Beginning of the week, not so much data. The only thing you really have to worry about is Tuesday's Manufacturers Index. That's coming in at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And the PMI Manufacturers Index. The Manufacturers Index is going to give us a better idea of what to expect later in the week when things really heat up with the jobless claims and Jerome Powell speaking and the employment situation. So look for volatility, look for subdued market action beginning of the week and look for more volatility, look for volatility to increase as we get more into fundamental data that's related to the Fed. Now, as far as global markets, we had a negative week for the S&P 500. I believe we had two negative weeks for the S&P 500. We erased most of the gains due to, you guessed it, fear over China. Wall Street capped last week with a second straight week of losses for the S&P Friday as worries about a potential escalation in the trade war between U.S. and China erased early gains. Technology companies are leading lower right now. Believe it or not, they were leading higher. The strongest sector the last couple of weeks was technology, followed by consumer staples and utilities, which is really odd because whenever you have technology leading, usually utilities are the last because utilities are very defensive. But now you're seeing utilities and technology. Strongest, weakest, strongest, weakest, or strongest, most defensive, strongest, most defensive sectors lead. So that's not positive. That's a sideways trading action type of market. Look for the small caps to rally. That's going to be the first major sign that U.S. is shrugging off China when the Russell 2000 rallies. Before that, just expect more sideways trading action. Why? Because the Russell has so much uh, market share in it that it's impossible for the large caps to rally too much without the overall market participating. Now, let's talk about something more important and the next big catalyst, which is earnings. So far, we had 15 reports from the S 15 issuers from the S&P 500 issued their numbers. It's it's too small of a sample, obviously, 15 stocks, but so far the numbers are below expectations. For the next 7 days, we're expecting stock earnings from the following stocks. Let me show you the ticker symbols. Leonard Corporation all this is within the next seven days. The stock is near all-time highs. The numbers are expected to be positive. Interest rates are near historic lows. I'm expecting upside for the stock. Usually when earnings come out, when stocks are near all-time highs, the numbers are positive, especially when you don't see a run-up leading to the earnings season. So that's the first stock. The next one is Pepsi-Cola. Notice these are consumer staples. These are not discretionary stocks, also near 52-week highs with price congesting and not that much cross-contamination with Pepsi and China, more so with Coca-Cola than China. Uh, Pepsi doesn't export as much as Coca-Cola, so there's a lot more, a uh, lot bigger impact with China. So for now, I would stick with Pepsi instead of Coke. That's just a side note. Again, earnings within the seven days, the stock is near all-time highs, and I like this congestion that we're seeing right now. The next one is coming out on the 7th of October, and it's the big one. It's the biggest stock with market cap. This is going to come out next Monday. Again, stock is near all-time highs. That's very positive. Numbers have been, um, expectations for Apple have been lower and lower and lower. And when that's priced into the, into the estimates and the number comes out slightly above the lower expectations, that's usually positive. So unless something really unexpected happens, or Apple starts coming to the 50-day moving average over the next 50 days, expect uh, Apple to stay strong and maybe even give us a gap up towards new highs. That's what typically happens with Apple, especially when the numbers are expected and already written in lower and lower and lower. The stock outperforms the expectations and the stock rallies. Remember, whenever you're looking at earnings, we're never looking at the actual number. We're looking at the expectations. And you can find out what the expectations are. Let me show you right here under ink, under earnings estimates. All right. Let me just show you real quick. You could see right here, all the estimates right here. So if you're on bar charts, just go down to earnings estimates after you pull up the ticker and you're good to go. And finally, the last stock also defensive. Every stock here, Leonard Holmes, Costco and 
Pepsi is defensive. Apple is not defensive. It's a speculative tech stock. But again, every stock that I'm showing you is near all-time highs. This one's cooling off a little bit, but still, it's not looking bad. It's looking like it's near all-time highs. Um, again, keep your eye out on these stocks. It's near the 50-day moving average. If the stock is below the 50-day uh, moving average when earnings come out, that's not positive, but it's near all-time highs or strongly above the 50-day moving average, that's positive. I'll keep you posted as the week continues. Overall, overall, earnings are expected to be down a little bit over 4.5% compared to last quarter on 4.7 or 4.3% higher revenue. So that's the target. The expectations have been... Uh, lowered and lowered and lowered and that's usually positive for the overall stock market for the next few days expect choppy trading range not a lot of momentum not a lot of upside especially with this impeachment talks you know i don't know if it's gonna if it has any legs or not probably it'll end up being exactly what Mueller's probe ended up being leading into a bunch of nothing but it's big right now it's the word on the street is there's going to be impeachment proceedings again it's probably going to end in nothing, just as most investigations have been over the past four years or past three years. They have led to nothing, but keep your eye on the bond market, especially towards the second part of the week, because there's a good chance we may continue moving higher and testing new highs. Why? Because the Fed already told us rates are going lower um, and the economy looks like it's slowing down. So when the economy slows down, interest rates usually go a little bit lower and bonds rally i'll talk to you guys tomorrow keep your eye out on len leonard holmes pepsi apple and costco talk soon take care and be careful out there